what's up hey how are we doing today guess what i'm gonna do today it's gloomy it's cold it's nasty we're gonna go out to the lake we're gonna put some fish in the boat but most importantly we're gonna talk about setting up your live scope system i have done an episode on this already but that was done back in may probably about eight to ten months ago and we've learned so much so today we're going to talk about all the things that you need to know in terms of setting up your live scope so if you just got one you're in luck i'm taking you from a to z on the setup in fact what i'm going to probably do is start from the standpoint of that you've got it set up go through the settings and then i'm going to work backwards transducer placement all those things that are so important. I get a thousand questions. In fact, I came back from the Grizzly Jig Tackle Show and we talked about live scope so much. A thousand questions. I'm going to try to answer a lot of those questions that I was asked there uh, to get you through this process. So next time you see me, I'll be on the water. Thanks again for joining me. Please subscribe. Here we go. Get ready for a fantastic episode from Three Pound Fishing. Thanks to these great sponsors. So yeah, if you just got a live scope system, this is gonna be the episode, because I'm gonna take you from A to Z. And if you're here to watch Kimmy Catch Fish, trust me, that's gonna to happen too. We're gonna to go out to the water as soon as we're done with some stuff here on the boat, and we're gonna put some slabs in the boat. Um, I'm gonna show you the Garmin, the active captain setup. I'm telling you, if you just got a live scope, this is the episode for you. I've worked with it now extensively, had a lot of questions. I'm gonna be able to answer a lot of those questions. And we're going to do it here on this episode today. Nasty day. Let me tell you, we got freezing temperatures. Um, well, I guess it's your typical winter day, but hey, just to let you know, I've got some new hoodies out there. I'm not showing, maybe I'll show a picture here on the screen, but um, they probably won't be on our website. It'll be something you'll have to email me at three pound fishing at gmail.com to get to, but um, they're pretty sweet. All right, so we're gonna start off by talking about when you receive your unit. When you receive your unit, your forward view is gonna be set to automatic and so is your depth. You need to go into your manual menu right here. You need to go into your menu and go to depth range and pick out a depth range that you'll feel comfortable with starting out at. And what that automatically does is that puts you, you into manual so your device isn't going back and forth. So that's for your depth. And then as soon as you turn your dial, now this is the 1042 and I'll go through the units here shortly, but um, as soon as you adjust your forward view, that's also positioning it into a manual setting. So the point of that is, is that you wanna maximize whatever you're seeing on the screen by setting this to manual and setting this to manual. Otherwise it fluctuates back and forth throughout the day, which gets very frustrating. So this is a 1042 unit. Um, the advantage of it, I think, I think is, is this dial. My ability to go here and go back and forth in a forward fashion like that forward view very quickly is a huge advantage. Whereas if you get like maybe one of those nine inch screens, you're always having to push it like this. Now I'm not saying there's a big difference, but I think the, the dial is pretty, it's, it's an old style, but I like it because it's very quick and reactive. I'm hoping that at some point they'll change this center, this little dial down here to give you a third option, which would be depth change as well so that you could dial it but right now that button only has gain and forward uh, range and right now it's at 30 see how it changes there and if i push the, the the dial in i go to gain and here's the next setting folks on gain i'm always sitting around that 68 65 number and i never mess with it i, I literally never mess with it so but i think at some point they should have a third uh, deal there where you can actually adjust the depth so that would be really crucial the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into menu and you're gonna go to sonar setup and your noise reject my noise reject is set to high I think medium or high whichever one you feel best with I, I obviously have feel better with high that's important to me it just gets all the noise reject off there TVG what TVG does is it actually eliminates clutter around the top quadrant of your screen so if you go back here and we see what we just did i eliminated all this artifacts that i'm getting right now um, so i actually have it set as off and i'm okay with the artifacts being up there because at the end of the day i'm rarely fishing something that's up here um, and to be and also for some reason I, you know and this might be just my unit but when the sun comes out all this clutter goes away but when it's overcast it seems to be there a lot more 
um, as the day kind of changes. But regardless, my TVG is always off. Now, if you want to adjust your, your information that you have here on the side, you can go into overlays, navigation, top bar, bottom bar, what you want to see, what kind of data. I selected none so that it would stay as uncluttered as possible. You're also, when you get your screen, you're going to have probably a sidebar right here. I'm trying to remember how I got to that, but I believe it's in the edit overlays as well. Yeah, so sidebar right there is where your sidebar are, and you're gonna take that back and you're gonna say, I want nothing, none underneath there. And that will open up your screen completely. Now you'll notice that I don't have the GPS mark on my screen either. I took that off so that I, could, I wouldn't be sharing uh, waypoints and, and brush piles, but you can modify this to be whatever you want it to be, which is awesome. but it's the start of the day didn't take but less than a minute to get a first fish on uh, today I'm fishing active captain is on now now a great fish and you saw all of that on active captain what I did was I when I realized that the fish were moving through I decided to cast out there and that's a big fish right there that's probably a 13 inch fish I decided to cast away from their boat and drag it through them and you saw that bite so successful active captain showing now active captain is not available on every unit so be sure that you check that out Okay, I know that on the 1022, the 1222, the 1242, the 1042, they are, it is available on that, uh, those units. But basically all you're gonna do is download the app and then um, queue it up, match it up to the Wi-Fi that's on the unit. And you're gonna be able to record all of the stuff that you need to record to show off great catches like that. That's fantastic. We're gonna let these guys go today. But that's a great all right so let's have another look at this here i am dropping in behind the school of fish that are moving towards me so i know that these fish are moving towards the head of my trolling motor and all i do is i pick up my lure i see it and i try to hover it right above the fish i don't want to go into them i don't want to disrupt them i want to see if anyone wants to come up and grab it and that one did right there and there's your 13 inch line So the, the 1042 um, has a great pixel rate. It's, it's uh, I would say that it's very acceptable. I think the 1042 or the 1022, those are 10 inch screens. There's also the 12 inch version of that, which would be a 1222 and a 1242. So those are all acceptable uh, pixel rate screens. I know that there's a one that is even more so than that. I believe it's called the Ultra, um, but it's very expensive. So these, these units right here, a 1042 comes in at roughly around fifteen hundred dollars and uh that was my price point what made me feel most comfortable with like getting any more expensive than that i thought was uh outside of my being comfortable so all right let's catch some fish we are gonna but uh still really good fishing they seem pretty active today Now these fish are at six feet, so I'm staying away 50 feet. There it is, first cast. Here he comes. So that the, the fish were 50 feet away 
because they were only six feet down, I stayed that far away. This is a good fish. Probably going to be the best fish of the day so far. Oh yeah, it's a two pounder. This is a two pound fish. That's a two pound fish. That is a hog. Let me see. Five. It says straight up, oh, there it is, 207. And if we measure it out, that's a 15 inch fish. We're going to keep it for pictures, but we are going to release it. That's how it's done. That's awesome. Ozark Rides Pro Series. Use the code three pound for 10% off. Folks, you can't beat that. Anything on the website, 10% off. Great rods. That's a better fish. I thought they looked better. That's about a 13. That's a good fish. Shake it off. Come on. You're going to have a big selection of options on mounting it. Um, I've got it mounted on my shaft right now because I want to chase crappie. I want to go left, right really quick. The Ultrex allows you to do that. So if you have a trolling motor like the Ultrex where it's quick left and right, I think putting it on the trolling motor is the most efficient way to do it. Let me show it to you. So, here's the configuration. Now that's, that is called a port side installation. Port side installation, there's also a starboard installation, meaning it's parallel to the ground and I think it looks and makes the most sense. The other option is you can put this transducer on your barrel of your trolley motor. Here's the issue I have with that. Let me just point out the barrel real quick. The issue I have with that, and I have had it on the barrel before, is that it really leaves it exposed. Um, when I'm going through timber and I've got that thing on the barrel, I feel like it just takes me to come up against anything and it could hit that transducer. So I totally recommend putting it on the shaft. I feel at least then, at that point, you have the front of the barrel that will protect your transducer in case you run into a stump or something like that with your trolling motor. Now, the other options you have are the standalone uh, you know handles like the fishing specialties that I have you also can get the uh, live sweep from cornfield crappie gear Those are great options, too, but I always tell people I say hey There's no reason why you wouldn't start with maybe the trolley motor shaft It's not like you're tied to it forever um, You take it off You try the barrel if you don't like the barrel again I don't recommend the barrel you simply take the transducer off you fix fix it to a live sweep system or a fishing specialty system uh, all great, but you're not tied to it. It's very easy to move this thing on and off. Also, in terms of your installation, don't forget to use electrical tape. Do not use zip ties. They say that might damage the cable itself. slab with the snow the snow is bearing down on us right now bam another good fish this this could become interesting awesome fish are biting fish are biting and the snow is about to pop on us big time you can't see it down on the lake but it's headed this way so we'll see how good this footage becomes It's a snowstorm. Woo! Nasty. 
nasty day. It's kind of funny. It wasn't that bad when I got out here right away, and then all of a sudden it's turned on us. Uh, so right now what I've got is I've got the power poles down, and because my live scope is on the trolling motor shaft right now, uh, if I have my power poles down, I'm allowed to move that that live scope back and forth and actually find the fish using that. So I don't have the live sweep on now because I've got it taken out. I'm putting the 10 uh, the 10 RPM uh, motor on it so it moves faster left and right. I had a guide trip today and I, I called the guy up and I said, listen, this is not for everybody. So you need to decide whether or not this is for you. For me, it's no big deal. And like you, as you see, I'm out here. But uh, in my guide trips, I always give everybody the option um, if I feel like the weather is going to be extreme. So right now we're at freezing temperatures, 10 mile an hour winds, and now it's snowing. I say that's extreme. So much bigger on the screen. Good night. I thought those were big fish. He looked big. He's only about a ten and a half. So the big key with live scope is truly just keep adjusting. I think that the advantage of the 1022 and the 1042 and the you know these type of monitors is that dial, the ability to move back and forth on forward view, uh, maximizing your screen, those type of things. Big, big, big advantage. I don't think people um, understand as, as well as until you get your unit. Also, the other thing about the consider is that there's a lot of touch screens out there. Um, the reason why I'm not for touch screens is that you're gonna get a lot of stuff on your hands and you do get a glare on these screens when you're staring down them all the time. If you have a bunch of fingerprints and guck on your hands, that makes it really difficult to see what you're looking for, so. Now, let's also talk about the mounts. They're important. I get mine from Cornfield Crappie Gear. I am, I am partnered up with them, so to speak, um, but I do think their mounts are the best in the market. Um, sturdy, I use a double mount right now, and it's mounted on top of a bridge. The bridge is key because it actually adds a lot of stability when you have two big screens up here. So, Cornfield Crappie Gear, that's not a sales pitch, folks. That's reality. They are the best mounts in the business. I can be going down the lake with double setup uh, full throttle, big waves, and that sucker is tied to my boat. I saw a bunch of fish over here. Let's see if we catch one. Oh, it's another good fish. So the other thing to consider is the palette. I use the amber palette that the unit comes default at. I guess I, I've tried a lot of the different colors, the green, the blue, all that crap, but at the end of the day, it's just more whatever uh, 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 pleases your eye. Uh, I'm used to the amber color from Hummingbird as well, and so I've kind of stuck with, with that color palette. There we go, got it out there. Let it fall a little bit. We gotta get down to six feet. Even with that weight, you gotta give it a little, little, little weight. Then just start drawing it back. There it is. If I had one thing that I wish that Garmin would do also is add some maybe additional levels of brightness to their screens. Compared to a Helix, the brightness is definitely not near that, near that whatsoever. Um, so a lot of times when you've got glare, sun going on the screen, you can hardly see anything.
Feels like a good one. Adventure. Nice fish right there, nice fish. There it was. Watch that guy come get that from the get go. right there maybe ten and a half eleven. what's up folks hey great morning on the lake it was a cold day but the fish were moving and boy did we put some fish in the, in the live well I'm gonna let this guy go here I'm gonna show you this is a 2.08 slab pulled in with the old Ozark rods right here use the code three pound for 10% off that's a big fish Put this. Big fish. Big fish. Great day. Hey guys, thanks for watching today. We're letting all these fish go. It was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed the live scope kind of tutorial setup. This is the way you do it. This is the way you set it up. Mount it up front. Try it on your trolling motor shaft first. Then go to the, all the uh, specialty type items. Uh, cornfield carpet gear. I mean just try it out now if you know that that's not gonna be your thing Then go ahead and you know strap it on a live sweep system a, a fishing specialty system you choose uh, But it's great technology. I do think the 10 inch screen is kind of like the the sweet spot at least it is for me and uh, I've got two systems on my boat now. I've got a system up front a system in the back. They're networked together I can see what's going on on both of them from either screen um, that video, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet or not, but I did do a video on it. You'll see it. And uh, great technology. Awesome. Thanks again, guys.